One thing we've discussed on several occasions is the concept behind Enterprise Resource Planning, or ERP. This software solution provides functionality to a number of different operations within a company through the use of a common interface and a shared database. In a hotel, employees working at a reception desk may see a screen with the same look and feel as employees working in a restaurant or employees working in an administrative role, such as an accountant. The exact items and data on the screen may be different based on the role of the employee, but the way the screens look and the placement of the menus are pretty similar. Compare this to using Microsoft Office. Word, Excel, and PowerPoint all use the ribbon, and many of the tools on the ribbon are the same across all three programs. The tabs on the ribbon may differ based on the program, but there still is enough of a similarity for people to move from program to program without having to learn a new one. Contrast this with OpenOffice. There is more of a learning curve if you went from Microsoft Word to OpenOffice Writer or any of the programs in the OpenOffice suite. ERP solutions work well in larger companies with many different departments, but for smaller companies, there are other options. There's a shift nowadays to using web-based applications instead of locally installed ones. Reasons for this shift are the same for moving to cloud-based applications from local installations. Using Microsoft Office 365, which is the cloud version of Office, means you're using the most up-to-date version of Office every time you open it. But using Microsoft Office 2019, which is the local version, means you're using the most recently downloaded version on your computer. Office 2019 might not be updated once you open a program. You might have to manually update or restart your computer for updates to take effect. But Office 365 does all that for you behind the scenes. This leads us to the concept behind the three-tier architecture. This layout places all the data in one tier, all the applications that access and process that data in another tier, and the front end, or the way that users access those applications in a third tier. This may be a complicated concept to understand, so let's start with something that we're all familiar with, the internet. Amazon is an example of a database-driven website, where the data on each page of Amazon's site comes from a database. The web pages themselves are not hard-coded with HTML. In other words, each page does not have the different text and images as part of the underlying code. Instead, there is code on the web page, PHP for example, that calls for text and images from a database, and the web page is constructed pretty much on the fly every time you click an image or search for a product. The PHP code queries a database for images, text, pricing, manufacturer info, customer reviews, and many other elements, and then builds the web page from that, which is then shown to you on your browser of choice. You can see examples of this in businesses around here. Take Sam's Club as an example. As a customer, we can shop on Sam's Club's website and see different items, much like we can with Amazon or any other e-commerce website. Sam's Club also has a mobile app, which presents us with a different look and different options, but the app still accesses the same database that the website uses. If customers check out with an employee, that employee may have a different application for them, which may give them different options than we would, but that application would still access the same database as everyone else. You can see the similarities between this and ERP applications, and in fact, ERP solutions may be set up in a three-tier fashion, but we don't have to use an ERP solution to use the three-tier architecture. Think of this architecture as a computer. The hardware can be used to run Windows or Linux, just like the three-tier architecture can be used to set up an ERP solution, or it can be used with other application and database combinations. The text gets pretty heavy into different solutions, including SOAP, JSON, and REST. But for our purposes, just understand how this architecture works in general, and know that many companies are using this as a basis for their web-based applications. It's much easier to configure and update these than it is to configure an ERP solution, and you have much more flexibility in what you can do in this kind of architecture since these are based largely on web-focused languages.